Welcome to Off Constantly, your weekly ADD theater and pop culture extravaganza. I'm your host, Bomba. With me, as always, is Backwater. I am here. I am ready to start the show. It's the musical episode. I bet you didn't know that, did you? It is, and it's also, besides the musical episode, it's also the COVID edition because our third leg is not here due to illness. Yes. So we hope you get better. Mandy, Sam, whoever's sitting in on the next one, we yeah. hope you're you're feeling better. So we'd like to introduce you to, this is a very special edition of Off Constantly, obviously, because um, we I'd, don't have our other host here. I'd like to think every episode is I very do. special, but this one is even more special than those. Well, this, so. is, this could be like the ABC After School special of Off Constantly. We'll learn a lesson. We'll learn we a might, lesson. We, it could possibly change lives and save people. We will laugh. We, well, we might cry. Well, we're going to try and make people and laugh. And we'll learn and we'll grow as people. As people. So speaking of learning and growing as people, tonight's episode is exercise! Oh. Exercise! My God, if there's a we'll subject that I cannot physical, stop talking about, it's physical. freaking exercise. We're going to I know you look at me physical. and you're thinking, that guy probably doesn't exercise a lot. You'd be wrong. All the time, I'm getting swole. Body talk. Swole! Body so we're going to talk a little bit about getting swole today. Do you get swole often? It sounds dirty. It does. That's what makes it fun. I refuse to answer that on religious grounds. <laughs> it's a good answer. So uh, I, I, today we, we were a little, little uh, we're getting like up in technology. So we're not going to do cue cards anymore, I was told. We have smartphones. Save the whales. Save the environment. We're going to go to a smartphone. So... The subjects today are exercise, hiking, and we're going to end with a little quiz for you. Ooh. And Dave is covering our soil uh, minute tonight, and it will be awesome. soiled health. So if you soil, you're healthy. Think about that. So let's kick things off right away with... Our first question that comes from a viewer, uh, who is this? Tyson Johnson out of Dubuque, Iowa. Thank you for watching. I can't believe we get down there. Do you? I, I like that the person has Tyson Johnson. They're double, they're double son names. I it like makes that. it easy to learn how to spell in kindergarten. That's how they do things down in Iowa. That's, that's why Mike went with that too. Yeah. Tyson. Um, the, uh, the, the question that Mike, or not Mike, now you got me thinking, Tyson. <laughs> Mike Tyson is, sent a question. What is a memorable hike? What would be a memorable hike to you? I'm, tr I'm sitting here trying to remember a memorable hike. Yeah. So, like, so I'm the, jogging my memory. The first jogging one, the my jogging memory. Your memory. The first one you can remember would be that memorable hike. Let's well, see. while you're thinking, I will share mine. Okay. Okay. It was late August 1989. I was a uh, first class in Boy Scouts. We were at the uh, Tomahawk Scout Reservation, okay. which I'm sure many viewers out there know a Tomahawk. It's in, uh, I believe, Rice Lake, Wisconsin. We had just gotten back from our Order of the Arrow. I had received the highest award you can get in scouting, Cub Scouting. Or no, that was the Arrow of Light. Order of the Arrow, I don't know. Anyway, it was this ceremony that nowadays I'm pretty sure would be against the law. We were sitting at a campfire and a bunch of oiled up men in loincloths, I swear to God, came up to the uh, campfire. <laughs> and because we were chosen, we now had to follow these loincloth men oh, with, with torches into the woods. I'm not joking. I've watched glistening men for about 27 miles on this hike. They were not wearing shoes. I was. I barely made it. I don't know how it happened. When we got there, this is the killer, okay? We hiked all that way in, like, it was night, but it was, it was really beautiful scenery for what we could see the three feet in front of us from the flashlight. But when we got there, the whole thing was to go through this Order of the Arrow ceremony, okay? Now, that was a bridge. Now, this bridge um, 
was honestly about as long as this table. So we hiked what seemed to be 27 miles to walk across a bridge this long and got a white sash at the end of it. So glistening men walking at night with a flashlight and torches. At the end of it, I got like a Miss Minnesota sash to wear that was an, a flaming arrow. Okay, I like the sound of this. <laughs> and then you got a good fashion piece. I did, at the end I did. And then when we got back after I got my order of the arrow, so it was this huge ceremony where we had this great, um, you know, it felt pretty good. I got to be honest, it, it was it was a, it was an honor. And then we get back to camp and. The guy I was staying with, we just, Dan Pilstrom. I don't know if you remember Dan. I remember well, that name. We uh, we stayed in a cabin or a tent from World War II. Okay. Because they had canvas tents still there, there from World War II? I think it I was. I don't remember the fighting on, in, in Wisconsin during World War II, but it could have happened. I, well, I, I think they were just surplus oh, okay. tents. Okay, got it. So and we were going to really rough it that year. Now, mm. really roughing it meant we had a ceiling fan and television and <laughs> okay, everything. Okay, so it was, like, the, it was like, no, it's Korean War, but it was like something out of MASH? Kind of. Okay. It, okay. Exactly out of MASH, so like right. those wood-framed tents that you see. Okay. So we get back to our tent, and the one thing they told us was do not put food in your tent, ever. Mm -hmm. Don't ever put food in our tent. Well, we were 12. We knew better. Yeah. So we had a giant pickle bucket that we put our lantern and television on <laughs> at scout camp. And we decided that we were going to keep food in that bucket because okay. really you can't smell it if it's in the bucket. I thought maybe you had pickles in the pickle bucket. No, okay. Okay, no, no. That... It's just one of those big five-gallon pickle buckets. So Got it. And I call them a pickle bucket because I worked at McDonald's. No, I... And that's I, where I, what I, they came in was... I knew exactly what you were talking about. All right. So. Well, so the pickle bucket was in there with all of our food in there and our television sitting on it. Well, we came back from... The, I came back from the Order of the Arrow ceremony and my tent was moving. It was just like... And I'm like, someone's in there watching our TV. I got pissed off. <sighs> so I run up to the thing. I open up the back of it and I see the ass end of a bear. Oh! But it takes me a second to realize what I'm looking at. Because it's dark, I've got a flashlight, and I'm flashing. I've already out. seen these oiled up men, so right. you're, you're kind of prepped for it. But you know, there's it's not as glistening as well, all the all oiled sudden, up men. All of a sudden, I was seeing where their loincloths had come <laughs> from. <laughs> okay, it was it was a bear's tail, and I once it registered what happened, I have never moved so far fast backwards in my life. So I'm like crab crawling backwards, running away from oh. this thing. So. Trying to make a noise, and I think what came out was ah! literally okay. And our scoutmaster comes <laughs> running out of the tent, and he's got two cast iron pots, and he's just banging them across each other, going bear, bear, <laughs> bear. That thing took off, and for about a half mile down the trail, our tent and everything that was in it was down the trail. Oh, so that is my most memorable hike. Oh my god, top that. that. No, I can't. I think I maybe. I honestly can't. I must have hiked, but I can't think of anything. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can think of why I can't remember, but I won't go into that. But um, <laughs> um, questions. Yes. Because this episode is now about that experience right now, because that's all I'm going to be able to think about for the next 15, 20 minutes. Okay. The men that are leading you on this journey, uh, they were spiritual boys at best. journey. Okay, so they were like they were boys. It wasn't like the dads no, no, oiling no, themselves no, no, up because no. I can just imagine a bunch and, of beer bellied uh, no, balding men I mean, like were, oil were, themselves up. They were like they were the 16, 17 year old right. kids. They were Got the it. older kids in the group. And okay, had, and when I say they oiled themselves up, that might have just been you know me having a flashback to the Lost Boys and the saxophone player, <laughs> but that's how I imagined it happening. So I think, um, I, I think, what was that guy's name? I don't remember. I saw an action figure the other day of him. Ooh. They actually make the Lost Boys saxophone player action figure, <laughs> and I've got to get one. Dave, do you know who that guy is? Okay. Someone that has the Google should look that up because I also know that on, on not to segue away from what we were talking about, but I also know that on that, that, uh, where you can call people and have them do birthday messages. Oh, Cameo. Cameo. On Cameo, he's not only one of the cheapest ones, but he does the best job, I hear. 
Oh. Like he will give you a 10 minute spiel on your actual birth. So I'm thinking of doing it just I, because. I can't even think Two of reasons, Lost Boys is the greatest vampire movie ever made. I dare you to argue with me. Second thing, a glistening oiled up saxophone player wishing me a happy birthday. Not a bad day. Um, one, I had something there. Um, first of all, vampire movie. What we do in the shadows is gives it a run for for the for the money. But I don't disagree with you on best vampire movie. Um, two. Oh, hold on. You didn't know who it was. Who was it? Tim Capello. Tim Capello. <laughs> Shout out to Tim Capello. Not to be confused with the other Capello that sang the... That was a Capello. Oh, fuck. Fuck, fuck. I did not just say that. We don't have to edit that out because I didn't finish it. Fudge is what I was going to say. You sound like my kids. I was. <laughs> I do. <laughs> anyway. I say it. If you haven't seen Lost Boys, for the love of God, watch it. It's worth it just for the saxophone player. Have you guys seen it? Nothing. I got nothing. Maggots, Mike. Everyone under here. You're eating maggots. Everyone in this room right now is under the age of 30, maybe even 25. So they have no idea what I'm talking about. But I'm telling you guys, you got to see The Lost Boys. What sucked was my wife had introduced me to Twilight. I was all about a vampire movie. I was so excited to see it because I'm like, yes, a remake of modern day Lost Boys. <laughs> <laughs> the idea of <that> Twilight. <laughs> if you're sitting down to think, I'm going to be watching me a, a new age uh, Lost Boys, and then you sit down and watch Twilight, you're, I, it was you, were, uh, you're, you must have been like... Now, I know you're laughing. I'm laughing because I watched the full Twilight movie series within the last couple months, and so Wait, I'm well versed. On purpose? My wife wanted to introduce my daughter to it, and I was like, I hear that these, this movie series gets very weird at the end. So I had seen the other, like probably the first two, like right around the time they came, off, came out, and I was like, all right, not for me, but I want to know what's out there, what, what, what people are watching. But that gets weird. Yeah, um, I, after I watched the first one, I, <laughs> glistening vampires, and I, I, we finished it, and I was so disappointed. I, I told my wife that if the second part comes out and we have the opportunity to see it, or I can stick my head under the rear tire of an 18-wheeler and have all of the wheels go over it, I choose the latter because it was not a good movie. Which sucks because, I mean, Hunger Games was out at that time. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, all these other teen novels where the movies were good. That just, the acting was not good, the story wasn't good. And, and speaking of that, that also reminds me that treadmills nowadays come with the screen on them. So, you know, circling back to, to, to exercise, well, that is this episode. Okay, yes. And so here's my suggestion for the treadmill makers um, out there. What if we had you're walking on a treadmill, and all of a sudden, there becomes a threat. There's the, there's a threat that you are getting chased down by werewolves. So then, on the screen, you'll you'll. You, how do you do this so it's behind you? Because you're not going to run towards the the, were, the werewolves or the vampires, right? Right. So you almost have to have a screen behind Holy you. Holy smokes! Hold the phone. You just made the invention right there. Treadmills. I'm so tired of the ones that have the screen in front of you to see what's coming. Enough with the screen in front of you. Behind you yes. to give you motivation. Yep. I mean, you've got a Rancor monster chasing you from behind. Yep. You're going to move. Yeah. Uh, or a bear. So maybe it's a, you're, there's a mirror in front of you, but you see the screen behind you, and you see, um, like, glistening Boy Scouts are running after you, trying to make you give back your uh, arrow, of, arrow light. of light because they're like... Or order, order of the arrow, sorry. You introduced the bear. You introduced the bear. I did um, not deserve it. No right. food in the tent. No food in the tent. And they're coming after you with their, uh, I don't know, their sashes. or. <laughs> and not to, not to go back to this story, but I can tell you, 
the <laughs> one of the no. worst no. moments I'm of going my back life to that story. growing up was okay after everything settled down the bear didn't eat anybody we got most of our stuff most of our stuff yeah. back into the tent having two scout masters Ooh. pull up a chair and say Jason we need to talk to you for a minute um, what was there was there food in, in in your tent and at 12 you panic and you lie and you say no the problem with this is is they they had the, the bucket that had all of the food stuffed into it already as evidence. Now we learned a valuable lesson no. that that uh, number one, you don't lie. Yeah. And it, it, if you lie, hide all evidence. Yeah, that's true. Because it was it was not hard to figure out you that. I was got, like, now what do you remember? What kind of what food was it? Was it literally all candy? No, it was like it was good stuff like beef jerky. Okay. And, you okay. know it was the. I don't know if you remember when we were kids, but the Lowry's. Sure it was bear jerky. Because then that bear really would have gotten a, uh, a, a taste of his own medicine. Literally. 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 When he starts eating his brother. Yeah. Um, bear jerky. I also like the idea of the bear, you screaming, your sl sash flying off, and your bear running through the woods with its order of the, your order of the arrow slash on it. Oh. Runs across that bridge. Yeah. No, it had a tent on it for quite a while. <laughs> but the order of the arrow sash was firmly placed across my chest. So, oh. so there wasn't anything going to get that get that off. So um, going back to, have, speaking of treadmills, did you see that uh, meme, the real funny meme that said how to avoid the zombie apocalypse? No, I don't believe I saw that. Okay. Meme. It's, it's super funny because it's like a, an old far side one. Mm -hmm. And all it is is a house with like 300 treadmills facing it. Mm -hmm. So as the zombies walk towards your house, they're stuck on a treadmill. <laughs> they can't actually get to you. I thought that was funny. Anyway, there you go at home. There's a visual joke. Just you imagine. Guys, close your eyes, everyone. Yeah, close your eyes and think imagine about it. Imagine a house, all right? Stop a having, normal house. It could be uh, Stop having house. a conversation with the control room. You know that this crap isn't any good anyway. It could so. be... Like a, it could be a big house. It could be a small house. could it doesn't be. doesn't matter the house. Does, size of house doesn't matter. Imagine tree line street house on it. Treadmill. 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 In a zombie, giant square. Zombie zombie zombie, zombie. 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 On the treadmill. Walking. Never quite get into the house. It's funny. Oh my God. Okay, so if you don't think it's funny, you don't have the imagination to imagine it being funny. Zero. So that's zero. on you, not on us. Speaking of imagination, our next. Question comes from Stan Spadowski from Numic, Utah. Uh, the question says, Deer off constantly. That's us. Oh, cool. What type of person hiked for pleasure in the 1700s? Now, if you think about it, in the 1700s, there weren't a lot of alternative transportations. You didn't have a horse and buggy. Well, did they have horse and buggies back then? We'll say they did. I think there were horses. Okay, but did they invent the buggy? I think there were buggies. I don't know if they put two and two together. We learn stuff on the show. Yeah. See, when we ask questions like this, inherently one of the cameramen should be like, let's look this up and see if they did have horse Actually, and buggy. horse and buggies because date back to the 14th. Well, there were yeah. chariots well before there this. There were in Jesus' times, right? So what are we talking about, the 1700s? 1700s. My point is there wasn't a lot of options for transportation. I don't think I would venture a guess that you weren't, there wasn't a lot of time to just be taking leisurely walks in the 1700s. Right? If you were doing something, you were going out to be like, yeah, we're going to go to the ye old fishing hole and fish. And how do we get there? And it, at that time, it wasn't even the ye old fishing hole. It was just, just the ye, ye fishing, fishing hole. hole. Right. So I'm guessing walking was the major form of transportation yeah. back then. Yeah, I would think so. So they might have had a stone wheel that they jumped on and rode <laughs> <laughs> like Fred Flintstone. But I'm guessing no. Yes, we have an answer. The chariot was made in 1650 BC. So, so a, lo a long time before. Yeah, we're talking. So they had chariots then. Yeah. You also have to repeat the answers back. Oh. Uh, but apparently, 
Four-strong vehicles were like chariots invented by the Mesopotamian about 3,000 BC. 3,000 BC was when they... They uh, had chariots. They had horse-drawn buggies. So, knowing this... Well, you have to have a horse. In the year 1700, yeah. what kind of sick bastard would choose to go on a hike knowing that, you know, I'm going to go somewhere and hike, and then later let's go to dinner. Oh, but we have to walk there because... Our Mazda isn't working. <laughs> well, maybe it was just that sick bastards. They would, you know, they would just go for medicinal walks. Maybe that's maybe that's who was hiking. It was by which is funny. In high school, I, during lunch, I'd take a lot of medicinal <laughs> walks. So, um, so they would go walking maybe to get the demons out of their feet or after you know, they bled themselves. Yeah, yes, they, yeah. They they. They, the leeches, the leeches had done their thing, yeah. Um, and then they would go for a walk to get uh, the blood moving, so the, the leeches could get the the dead blood. Yes, they needed to regenerate more blood, which was only done through the sun gods. And literally, I can't think. Can you guys help us out here? Can you think of any reason on earth you would walk in the 1700s, go on a hike for funsies? What's that? Horse yeah, broke its go. leg. There's a good one. You, you, you have no choice. You, you, your horse broke its leg. You got to go get a new leg for the horse. So the you're going to have to walk to the leg store. The other thing that I'm thinking is this, Backwater. Uh, there probably wasn't um, Netflix. There was no Netflix uh, gonna, and chill somebody, back then. Could somebody, one of the cameramen, uh, uh, Google that on whether or not there was Netflix in the 1700s? Because I, 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 I'm I, not sure on I'm that. I'm guessing that that was before Netflix, so... They, you know what they probably had back then? The mail order where you still got the physical DVD. Yeah, it was like the J.C. Penny catalog um, talkies. <laughs> um, are we doing a soil minute now? Are we ready? Is, there, is the camera on, David? Oh well, let's go and talk about healthy soil from W, our soil expert. Soil health. Bamba, our soil can actually be healthy. So soil health refers to the ability of the soil to support biology below the surface as well as above the surface. In fact, Lau, a professor from the, the Ohio State University, working on a project for the United Nations, determined that we could, by increasing our soil health, sequester so much carbon in the soil, in our degraded soils, that would drop the CO2 in the Earth's atmosphere up to 100 parts per million. So that is pretty huge, because it would take us in the whole global warming thing back to the 1960s, as far as that. That's how much potential Ruby. there is for life in the soil. Now, on a local level, increasing that soil health increases infiltration. It increases the resiliency of the landscape to drought, because the soil holds more moisture. And it uh, increases fertility because there's more organic matter supporting the plants. So soil health, it's not always about treadmills. And that's your soil minute. So, oh, whoa, 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 so many questions here. You go first. I will say, so you're gauging the soil's health. Is it more important that the soil is healthy for what is below or what is above? Like, do you understand? So you let's, how do you gauge soil health? Uh, there's like, a is it a number? Okay. There are some people who attempt to put numbers on it, but basically... Um, Age in soil ain't nothing but a number. Right. Um, healthy soil down below will produce healthy plants above. So it, okay. the, healthy soil comes first. So... so uh, so, but, okay, so the underneath part would be the more important part because then it will support what's above. Got it. Okay, I think. So, right. you're saying that down below, soil is healthy, possibly, and that that's where all the fertility and magic happens, right? Right. Did you remember seeing The Martian with, uh, I believe it was Matt Damon? Is making uh, Martian soil. I can't support remember some potatoes. That didn't oh happen. wait, yeah, yes, 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 yes. Right, fairly forgettable movie, but yes, I remember that. Forgettable. 
It was a space soil scientist. I mean, <laughs> just imagine. The a two space. things that capture that children's imagination. That was about. Space, space and soil, soil science. Whoo! Combine them together. Hey, Star Wars, suck it. We got something that was really going to blow your you, kids. You minds. combine those two together and Dave's busy for that entire evening. Anyway, but the, um, um, the, I got forget it. Um, I had so many double entendre jokes. There was, yeah. there was like, you like underhand pitched them. So, but thank you for that. Uh, uh, I feel better. Oh, one more. Oh, one more. one more. How many parts per million of CO2 are we at currently? Because if it could reduce it by a hundred, are we at like 5,000? So a hundred is just a... I think we're at 420, but don't quote me. Mm, yeah. I, I think we're at 420. What does that mean? We're at 420. What does that mean? I heard 450 things start to happen in the world that are hard to change. Okay. So according to the models. Okay. Yeah. All right, Dave. Thank Giselle you. Giselle Bunchen. I, I Soil feel, health. I, I feel yeah. educated. Thank and you. Better. That was so that was like a soil five minute. Does that mean we're wrapping up on time here? There because can never be enough. We have minutes one for final soil. question. It's a quiz. Do we have time for the quiz? All right, here we go. Are you ready, Jay? Uh, of course. According to soil Glow Fox. Glow Fox? Glof Glofix or Glow Fox. I don't know. I have no idea what that is. I think it's glowfox.com. Go check it out. They're not a sponsor. Don't. Never mind. Anyway, there are nine of the most popular gym complaints given at a gym club. Okay. So let me see if you can oh. guess. Can we do if this you, like Family Feud style? We can. Okay. I don't know how we're gonna do that. Okay. Well, yeah, you just tell me you. if I got one. If I get if I guess one and it's not on the list, I get an X. And if I get three X's, we're done. And then you read them. So. After you give me an answer. But if I get all nine, you leave the show. This becomes just my show from now on. <laughs> okay, here's the answers. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, uh, I, will, uh, I, I, will, I will ask, if, I'll tell you what, if you get one, if you get three, eh, you're out, you're done. If I get three wrong or yeah. right? Okay, yep, fair if, enough. If and that then you happens, them all. if you get three wrong, and I go, ah, three times, I get that globe. Okay. Now, if you get it right, you not only get this globe. Oh, I love it. God, the big globe. That's just right. The big globe you means everything. You become the big globe. You'll also get the most current off constantly sign to hang up in your living room. So, now. Most current, that thing has been around. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay, so we got one minute, so we don't got a lot of time. This is our This, is, this is fire. Okay, fire. ready? Nine gym complaints given to the health club by, according to Glow, Glowfox or Glowfix.com. Okay. First answer. First answer. Remember, is run out of time. They're out of towels. They're out of towels. Survey says. <sighs> eh. Okay. Um. The wait, 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 we'll do that. Good answer, good answer, good answer. Okay, go. <laughs> the, uh, the machines are always occupied. There's too many people on the machines. They're never open machines. Service as. <laughs> okay, well, last chance. Here we go. Um, the, it's too expensive? It's too expensive. Survey says. Eh. Okay, so you know you kind of let me read them through I, them real I quick. I pivoted because at go. some point there it's are, like there are nine of them. Real quick, I'm just going to read through them. Poor gym hygiene, staffing issues, lack of attention, ineffective communication, broken equipment. Oh, sorry. No, I didn't. Overcrowding, I last minute cancellations. Overcrowding. I get that for people on the machine. No results. Yep, you get that. No results. I don't know what that means. Oh, How they're not getting results or empty promises. On that note, that I guess that is it. We are promise. wrapped for the evening. Thank you for watching this special edition of Off Constantly. Have a good night. Peace and carrots, 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 peace and carrots.